this is the story of two Truro merchants. Now Truro is well known for its ancient cobbled streets, rich history and narrow oaks and alleyways. You might have heard of the ominously named Squeeze Guts Alley. Southeast of there, and a few streets away, you'll find Lemon Key, which, during the time the story takes place, was a fully functioning trading port, with busy merchants and boats carrying all kinds of goods, such as slate, saffron, copper, tin, and grain. This story is about two such merchants, and a wise judge. Yes, indeed I am, indubitably wise, and very old. <gasps> Who are you calling old? The judge was well known in Truro and was well respected for being fair and always arriving at the correct judgment. Innocent, innocent, guilty, guilty, innocent, guilty, innocent, guilty, very guilty. As for these two merchants, one sold lemons. Lemons? Um, get your lemons here! The lemon merchant was known to be kind and polite. Get your uh, lemons here, oh, but please don't feel bad if you don't want to buy any. <laughs> and generous. Lemons for sale! Um, oh, buy zero! Uh, get one free! The other merchant sold oil. Wanna buy some oil? Nice olive oil. You know, for your salads. <laughs> Sunflower oil, for your chips. Take your pick, I've got them all. Vegetable oil, canola oil, truffle oil, crude oil. The oil merchant was renowned for being slippery and rude. Oi, you, buy some oil, why don't you? I ain't got all day. And greedy. Today's special offer, two for the price of three. All in oil, the oil merchant didn't appear to be a very nice chap. Yeah. One morning, the judge was about to enjoy a lovely cup of tea, when suddenly there was a huge ruckus from outside, and in through the front door burst the oil merchant and the lemon merchant. The two of them were arguing and fighting and bickering with each other. Oh, I did, I did, oh, I did, oh, I did, oh, order, order. Stop this at once. Order. I will have order. What is going on here? A policeman explained that the merchants have been arrested and brought before you because both claim to own the same large bag of gold coins. The judge turned to the lemon merchant and said, Lemon merchant, explain to me. Your side of the story. <clears throat> yes, well, um, Your Honour, I'm, I'm awfully sorry to interrupt your afternoon tea like this. It, it must be a jolly inconvenience. However, I, I do have a real problem. This bag of gold coins here is all of the money that I've saved up from years of hard work um, selling lemons on Lemon Key. It's a very special bag of money uh, because I've been planning for years now uh, to donate it all to charity. I'm going to give half of it to the local orphanage and the other half is for making tiny little socks for dogs. As don't you think uh, 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 that their feet must get cold and their little paws could be warmed up with socks? I mean, walking around on, on the cold, cobbled streets, barefooted like that. It's about time someone thought of socks for dogs. <clears throat> but this oil merchant here claims the money is his. Oh, I do so hate to make a fuss, but I must insist that it is returned to its rightful owner. Very well. Thank you, lemon merchant. So the judge turned to the oil merchant. Oil merchant, explain to me your side of the story. About ready time. Okay, how can I put this uh, delicately? 
That man is a fraud. He's a no good do good and lemon selling sneak. That bag of coins is mine, not his. It's all of the money that I've made through selling oil with my shrewd marketing techniques and intensive Black Friday sales. I'm planning to use that money to retire. That's right. I'm going to spend all the money on me. Me, me, me. I'm leaving this Truro dump and going somewhere hot with good weather. It's my hard earned dosh and I ain't giving it away to anyone. I'm going to stand here and make the biggest fuss I possibly can until that money is returned to its rightful owner. That's me. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. Mine. Okay, thank you, oil merchant. Well, whatever shall I do? The judge scratched her head and rubbed her chin. Did the bag of coins belong to the lemon merchant or the oil merchant? What do you think out there, hmm, listening? Do you think it belongs to the lemon merchant? Or what about this uh, oil merchant? Well, <laughs> I've had an idea. The judge told everyone to gather round. I'm going to prove who the coins belong to. The judge proceeded to put down her cup of tea, pick up the bag of coins and drop the bag of coins into her tea. They all peered into the cup of tea and watched carefully as a layer of oil started to form on the surface of the tea. You see, the judge really was very wise indeed. The oil merchant sold and worked with oil every day, and so they often had oily hands. And when he took the customer's money, his oily hands would make the coins oily too. It was that oil that everyone could now see floating on top of the tea. Take the lemon merchant away. And with that, the lemon merchant was arrested. Oh, goodness. Um, oh, my. Oh, oh dearie me. Oh, fiddlesticks. Oh, oh rats. Oh, good curse you all. I can't believe you figured it out. I would have got away with it if it wasn't for that pesky cup of tea. Well, I'll get it next time. That, that, that money will be mine. And the bag of coins was returned to the oil merchant. Typical lemons. Cheerful and yellow on the outside. Sour on the inside. I'll be taking my rather damp money uh, and spending it on myself. Perhaps you should share it a little. You wouldn't want to end up like the lemon merchant, would you? Mm, well, uh, well I, I, I don't know. Uh, the oil merchant thought about it for a moment and decided, after all, to share the money with the children of the town. No, I didn't! And even donated some extra to the local charity for making socks for dogs. Oh, all right then. Yeah, okay. Oh, right. Yeah, socks. <clears throat> and that is why you should never judge a book by its cover. The end.